uh, when you consider oxidation of aldehyde and ketone to carboxylic acid then it is easier process for the aldehyde that is to oxidize it to carboxylic acid that is easier compared to ketones because in case of ketones under similar condition there will be no reaction but if we want to get a reaction that is the oxidized product from ketone you have to use some drastic condition only strong oxidizing agents such as KMnO4 can serve this purpose but it also involves destruction of CC bond so any of these CC bond left hand side of the C double bond O group carbonyl group or the right hand side any of the CC bond there will be cleavage so CC bond cleavage will take place so in case of aldehyde number of carbon atoms same there is no change but when it is ketone as there is fragmentation okay another possibility is like this as there is fragmentation so now the number of carbon atoms in carboxylic acid that will be decreased fine now how to know that which cco bond will be broken so in this case if i consider this side cc bond will be clipped or the other side how to know that to answer this question we will categorize ketone compounds in two types one type is symmetrical ketone another type is unsymmetrical ketone so when it is symmetrical ketone here we have taken the example of acetone ch3 coch3 when we are doing uh, oxidation under drastic condition then cc bond cleavage will take place now if you are breaking this cc bond from one side there is one carbon another side you are getting two carbon so from one carbon there is actually first formation of HCO2H that is formic acid and from another side you have to just add one OH to this carbon so you will get CH3COOH acetic acid though formic acid under this condition ultimately it will be decomposed to CO2 and water so that is why here it is written CO2 and water but if you consider the cleavage of the other CC bond basically you are getting the same fragment again you are getting one carbon from the right hand side that is methyl and from the other side CH3CO so here we are getting mixture of CH3COOH and formic acid is ultimately decomposed to carbon dioxide and water. Another example of symmetrical ketone, now it is cyclic and total number of carbon 6. Both sides it is same. So any of the CC bond you can consider in both cases, whatever uh, CC bond cleavage you consider, in both cases you will be getting same product. Third example for symmetrical ketone. Now we have both side two carbons. That is both side of carbonyl group. Now if we consider the fragment CH3, CH2, CO. And from the other side it will be CH3, CH2. So basically it is two carbon and three carbon. Right. So I can write it in this way. That is just break the CC bond and write the fragments. Now from these two fragments you have to just add one HO to this carbon and this CH3CH2 what you will do this CH2 you have to write as CO2H that means you are getting CH3CH2 CO2H from the first fragment and from the second fragment you are getting two carbon carboxylic acid which is acetic acid fine so these two you will get from these two fragment and if you consider the other possibility By other possibility, I am trying to say if you are considering this CH3CH2, 2 carbon, and the other possibility is this is this part is now 3 carbon. Now, again, you are getting the same fragment. So, what whatever is the side you choose, you will actually end up with the same type of product that is propanoic acid and acetic acid, mixture of these two. Fine. Next is unsymmetrical ketone. So, now the example that you are seeing one side we have one carbon and the other side we have two carbon and here we have numbered these three carbon because now we will see both the possibility we will break the bond one two and the other possibility two three and we will try to see what type of products we can get so first we have this two three cc bond cleavage and we are getting ch3co fragment so from this ch3co fragment you just have to add one oh so what you will get you will get ch3co2h 
and from the other side you just have to convert CH2 group to CO2H so again you will be getting same molecule so two molecules of acetic acid but the other possibility if one two bond is broken now when it is one carbon it is formic acid but ultimately it will be decomposed to CO2 and H2 and from the other side you just have to add one OH so you are getting propanoic acid CH3CH2COH now if uh, both these type of that is both side the CC bond cleavage is occurring simultaneously so what type of products we are getting we will get two molecules of that is CH3CO2H two or three that is not important but what are the type of compounds you are getting you are getting acetic acid molecule carbon dioxide water and also propanoic acid from this part that is 3 carbon carboxylic acid but the question is uh, we will get mixture or any of this one possibility will be uh, giving us the products so suppose this is possibility 1 this is possibility 2 so which of these two will be actually uh, we have to consider to answer this question there is a particular rule and this rule is known as Profop's rule. So according to Profop's rule, we can answer this question, which is basically the question of today's video, which CCO bond will be clipped in the oxidation of unsymmetrical ketone. So according to Profop's rule, during the oxidation of unsymmetrical ketones, keto group always stays with the smaller alkyl group. Now, if that is true, then again have a look in the previous slide with the smaller alkyl group now if you consider this unsymmetrical ketone this is the smaller alkyl group that means co that should remain with the methyl group so this is the bond cleavage that we have to consider that is 2 3 bond cleavage so this is uh, correct not this one according to this rule but the next question what is the logic behind this pofops rule that we have to understand when it is 2 3 bond cleavage then first you have to write the enol structure now if you consider these two alpha hydrogen in the enol formation what structure you will be getting ch3 coh cc double bond and then ch3 and the other possibility if you are breaking uh, that is sorry not breaking if you are uh, taking this one methyl group that is all these three any of these three hydrogen if they are taking plus sorry taking place in uh, they are taking part in enolization then it will be ch2c double bond coh ch2 ch now among these two enol which one is uh, more stable obviously this one is more stable because this cc bond that you are getting that is more substituted fine not this one now if we consider the first enol this is as the first enol then this will give you the product which is according to 2 3 bond cleavage that means now this cc bond cleavage if you consider what product you will be getting just you have to add one which uh, one carbonyl after cc bond cleavage and if you add directly one oxygen you will be getting basically acetaldehyde CH3COH but ultimately that will also be oxidized to CH3COOH so when it is 2,3 bond cleavage in the previous slide also we have seen when it is 2,3 bond cleavage we are getting two molecules of acetic acid but if you consider this enol this is actually 1,2 bond uh, CC bond cleavage and in that case from this side just add one OH so it will be propanoic acid and from the other side it will be you can write formaldehyde but ultimately it will be formic acid that is CO2 and H2 but you don't have to consider the second possibility because we know according to Pofop's rule this is the correct one and now we also know the logic the logic is as it is going through enol formation and this enol is more stable that is enol from one that is more stable than 2 so that is why this is the preferred part and as this is the preferred part 2 3 cc bond cleavage will take place now if we really want to know that uh, what how we can write this type of product after cc double bond cleavage then you can consider 
oxidative cleavage of CC double bond with KMnO4. We know that when we treat C alkene with KMnO4 under cold condition, it is dihydroxylation. But if it is hot basic condition, then CC bond cleavage possible and it is known as oxidative cleavage. Now, if the alkene is like this, where in the left hand side carbon you can see two uh, substitution and other side you do not have any substitution. So, for this type of di substitution, you will be getting ketone and when there is no substitution terminal uh, CH2, you will be getting carbon dioxide and water. Then the second example you can see here, this part is same just like the previous example, again you are getting ketone, other side it is mono substitution. So, for mono substitution, you will be getting salt of carboxylic acid. So, remember these rules, when it is di substituted alkene, it will be cleaved to ketone that we have seen in the left hand side carbon of both this alkene. When it is mono substituted alkene, it will be cleaved to carboxylic acid in salt form that you can see in this particular carbon in the second example. And if it is unsubstituted, for example, if it is terminal CH2 type of group, it will be cleaved to CO2 and H2O. Now consider the enol, that is the enol structure that is preferred through which we are actually getting the compound. So this molecule now you can consider as if it is left hand side carbon, it is disubstituted and for disubstituted, what is the rule? You will be getting it will be clipped to ketone that means just cons this OH group you don't have to focus because when I, say, I am saying it is ketone it is for alkene but in our case this R group is OH so that is why we are getting carboxylic acid and when it is mono substituted then from the other part also you will be getting carboxylate but after acidification it will be acetic acid. Similarly, you can also consider the other enol structure and you can write the uh, possible product though I, I will not write that because ultimately this is the enol through which we are getting the product. Okay. So, I hope uh, this discussion it will be satisfactory of uh, satisfactory to you uh, for the question in today's video that is why uh, in case of that is for unsymmetrical ketone how to know that which CCO bond will be broken. And please also have a look in the description box where you will find all the important playlists. Okay. So I will meet you in the next video.